When you do something very good, people start to notice it, and the more you do it better than others, the more customers you attract. This is also true in the space industry. SpaceX was just a small startup two decades ago, and today they are the largest and most successful company in the rocket launch business. Even NASA uses their rockets for crew and cargo missions. And recently, they've started getting attention from the biggest customer anyone in aerospace could ever get, the United States government. The U.S. Space Force just ordered SpaceX to do something they genuinely weren't expecting. We'll talk about every detail. But before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. The reason the U.S. military is paying so much attention is simple. Starship is not a normal rocket. Fully stacked, it stands about 121 meters tall, making it taller than the Saturn V. And when it lifts off, it produces around 16.7 million pounds of thrust, which is nearly twice as powerful as Saturn V and far more powerful than NASA's new SLS rocket. Nothing currently flying or even close to flying matches Starship's strength. Its payload capacity is also on a completely different level. A Falcon 9 can carry about 22 tons to low Earth orbit. The biggest rockets the United States used in the past, like the Delta IV Heavy, could lift around 28 tons. Even SLS, which is extremely expensive to fly, lifts around 95 tons. But Starship is aiming for 100 to 150 tons without refueling, and even more once the orbital refueling system is ready. For the military, this means a single launch can do the work of several smaller rockets combined. This kind of capacity opens up possibilities that never existed before. The U.S. military needs to launch extremely large satellites, missile warning systems, and entire batches of communication satellites. Some of these are so heavy or so large that existing rockets struggle to carry them. Starship removes that limitation. And since it is designed to be fully reusable, the cost per launch could drop far lower than anything the military has used in the past. Falcon 9 already lowered launch costs by a huge margin, and Starship could push that even further. Another major reason the Pentagon is interested is something called rocket cargo. The military has always wanted a way to deliver equipment or supplies anywhere on Earth in under an hour. Today's fastest military transport aircraft take many hours for long distances. A C-17 cargo plane can carry around 77 tons, but flying it across the globe takes most of a day. Starship could carry more than 100 tons and deliver it worldwide in less than one hour. This changes everything for the military, because no other rocket has the capacity or the potential of Starship. SpaceX has already earned the government's trust through years of reliable Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. Some of the most sensitive U.S. satellites, including missile tracking and intelligence systems, were launched by SpaceX. These missions performed flawlessly, and the cost savings were significant compared to older rockets like the Atlas V or Delta IV. So when the Pentagon evaluated Starship, they were not just looking at a prototype rocket. They were looking at a company with a proven track record of delivering national security payloads on time and at lower cost. All of this led to the latest major move. The U.S. Space Force has officially ordered SpaceX to build a brand new Starship launch pad at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Until now, almost all Starship testing and development happened at Boca Chica in Texas. But Cape Canaveral is the main hub for national security launches. It is controlled, secure, and surrounded by the infrastructure that military missions rely on. The Space Force wants Starship to operate directly from this location so it can be used for heavy lift missions, rapid satellite deployment, and possible cargo delivery tests. Building a Starship pad at Cape Canaveral also shows how serious the government is about using Starship. Florida launches allow rockets to take full advantage of Earth's rotation, giving extra performance. It also places Starship next to all the other major U.S. launch systems, making integration with future military missions easier and faster. The recent demolition of old launch sites at Cape Canaveral was a strong hint that the Space Force was preparing space for a much larger vehicle, and now we know that vehicle is Starship. But this growing relationship between SpaceX and the U.S. government also comes with serious downsides. 
As soon as a rocket becomes critical to national security, the Pentagon gains influence over how, when, and even whether certain launches happen. This is where the biggest risks for SpaceX begin. First, launch schedules would no longer be decided only by SpaceX. Today, SpaceX can launch Starship test flights when it is technically ready and when the FAA approves. But under military operations, the U.S. government can freeze launches during periods of tension, reprioritize flights for classified missions, or block commercial launches if they conflict with national security needs. Second, heavy government involvement brings strict secrecy rules. Military Starship missions would fall under classified programs. That means SpaceX engineers working on those versions of Starship would be limited in what they can share, even internally. Development would likely split into civilian and military versions of the vehicle. This slows down innovation. Meanwhile, China just pulled off one of the most impressive space rescue operations in recent years. While the United States is planning future missions with Starship, China was dealing with a real emergency in orbit that could have put astronauts' lives at risk. The incident happened aboard China's Tiangong space station, where a crew of three Taikonauts was living in orbit. Ground controllers detected a serious technical fault in one of the station's power management systems. The problem affected how electricity was distributed between the station's core module and the docked spacecraft. This was immediately classified as a high-risk situation. Power on a space station controls oxygen, temperature, communications, and onboard computers. If the fault had spread, the crew could have lost critical life support systems and been forced to evacuate. China's space agency activated its emergency response plan within hours. The crew was told to shut down all non-essential equipment to reduce electrical load. At the same time, engineers on the ground worked nonstop to isolate the fault and prevent further damage. As a backup, a fully prepared Shenzhou spacecraft, designated as an emergency rescue vehicle, was placed on immediate launch standby. It was fully fueled and checked, ready to fly on short notice if the station became unsafe. This meant that, if needed, China could bring its astronauts home quickly without waiting weeks for a new spacecraft. While rescue preparations were underway, the astronauts inspected the station manually. With guidance from Earth, they traced the problem to a specific electrical subsystem rather than a station-wide failure. This reduced the risk of a full evacuation. To support the repair effort, China launched a Tianzhou cargo spacecraft carrying spare parts and support equipment. The spacecraft docked successfully and confirmed that the station's external power systems were still stable. This allowed engineers to safely reroute electricity and continue recovery work. After several days of testing and controlled system restarts, the damaged subsystem was fully isolated. Normal station operations were restored without the crew ever losing life support, pressure, or communication with Earth. Once engineers confirmed the station was stable, the emergency Shenzhou rescue spacecraft was stood down without launching. The crew later completed their mission and returned to Earth as originally planned. What made this operation so important was not just that China avoided disaster, but how quickly and smoothly it managed the crisis. The country demonstrated that it can detect failures early, deploy rescue spacecraft on short notice, deliver hardware to orbit, and stabilize a crewed space station under pressure. China is proving that it already has disciplined, reliable control over human spaceflight today. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.